everybody, good morning. It's Risa from Hudson Valley Vintage and it's Friday morning, so we're here with Get Your Paint On. And I'm working from home today. So this is a resin pour. I did this a few days ago. You might have seen um, the post. And I did this with Fusion Mineral Paint. So we're gonna be using Fusion Mineral Paint's pouring resin. They came out with this in two, that late 2019, and I haven't had a lot of opportunity to play with it. So um, I've become really interested in resin pours lately. So I wanted to do something with this. And what I did was I followed Fusion's tutorial exactly to see if it worked for us. And that's a lot of what we're gonna be doing um, on Get Your Paint On on Friday mornings is following these tutorials that are out there and seeing, do they work well? Do we, can we do it exactly how they say? Is it as easy as they say? All those things. So we're using this. We're using um, Fusion's Cell Enhancer, and that's what you get the nice little bubbles with. And Fusion Mineral Paint, of course. I'm using Casement and a couple of other colors. So this is what I did a couple days ago. And I like it, I'm pretty happy with it. This was my first one. I did this on a piece of really junky wood. I can even show you, um, like this wood is just really in lousy shape and it's, it's warped and um, even through the paint pour, I can still tell that it's not great, but I'll tell you what, it's done a lot for the wood. The wood has a lot of lines in it and stuff. It's, it's not smooth. And the paint pour did cover some of that up quite a bit. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, this is what we're gonna do today. So let's get started. Let me just quickly explain, because I've done a lot of paint pours. I've been doing them for a few years now. We've done a lot of workshops with paint pours. So you maybe you're wondering, especially if you've taken one of our paint pour classes, what's the difference between what we did there and this? So the big difference is, since we're using a pouring resin, there we use way less paint. You're gonna be very surprised how little paint I used in this. But the neat part is I don't have to seal it. So this is super durable. I mean, it doesn't even feel or sound like wood. So it almost feels like this is glass or plastic. It's very durable. So you could do this as a piece of art, just hang this on your wall. You could do this as um, the top of a piece of furniture, which I know I'm gonna try. I have a table in my shop right now that I have my eye on for that. Um, and that's really been a big look right now. So what I did this morning was I painted this. This is a 12 inch round. I got this at Lowe's, okay. So I painted my surface, and the reason I like to paint my surface, oh, there's a couple of reasons. I feel like the paint moves better when your surface is painted. Now, there are a couple of exceptions to that, one of them being tile. So you wouldn't paint the tile first because tile is very slick, and the paint is gonna move really well on tile. Wood, however, is a little rougher so I like to give it sort of a primer so I've used casement which is going to be one of my colors so what I like to do is choose my lightest color and paint my surface first with that so with a pouring resin like this you need to know how much to use so I found this morning I was I just googled it and I came across this really great calculator that actually calculates how much pouring resin you need to use on your project. So there's a couple different ways you can look it up. If you have a rectangular or square piece, you put in the, the length and the width in inches. It also asks you for depth. So that's very important. It asks you what the thickness of your piece is. Now, it's a little bit different if you're doing an epoxy pour on a surface like this. So our amazing, wonderful, talented daughter-in-law made us these um, coasters for the holidays. Aren't they gorgeous? I just love them. 
so if you look at the thickness of this, it's pretty thick. It looks like it's about a half inch thick. So that's where you would put the thickness. So you're gonna need more resin if you're doing um, a resin pour like this. That's not what we're doing. We're doing it on a wood surface, so we don't need half an inch thick. So if they ask you what the thickness is, which they will, because that's determinant in how much you're gonna be using, you wanna keep that in mind. So you're not gonna put half an inch. You're not putting half an inch thick. Okay, so I, I, put, I went into this website and I put in that I have, I'm doing round, so they offer that as an option. And I put in 12 inches, because this is 12 inches round. I got this at Lowe's. For my thickness, um, I put in an eighth of an inch, and I said, they said, they said I need 7.83 ounces of medium. So we're gonna actually mix up our medium right now, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm using the same colors that Fusion use in their blog. This is Renfrew Blue. This is Heirloom. Casement. This is Azure. And this is Liberty Blue. They said that I should have on hand spoons. So I have spoons and a stick. And I have, so I have a stick. Okay, so I've got everything. But after I watched <coughs> the blog, I saw that I didn't really need the spoons because I'm gonna be using so, so little paint. So I need cups and I get these little shot glasses. They're perfect. You can get Dixie cups, those are good too. We're gonna start with the pouring resin. And I'm gonna be using about seven ounces. So this is a 16 ounce container. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna to try to pour out about half of this. Okay, so that's about half of where we were. All right, let's go. So I'm gonna start with my darkest color, which is Liberty Blue. So I'm gonna use so little paint that I only need to use a popsicle stick and I'm mixing it right into my resin and it's a little bit light, so I'm gonna put a drop more. I'm just gonna wipe off my stick. I'm gonna put a little bit more. Okay, so that's a little darker. So here's the, the mixture for Liberty Blue, and here it is in the, in the container. So it's a drop lighter. So you might not wanna use, you know, a lot of super light colors. A good way to know that is, if it's dark enough, is if it covers your stick in an opaque way, and this does. So we're good with this. Okay, so I'll put this one down, and I'm gonna go to the next color. All right, my next dark color is Renfrew Blue. That's the Renfrew Blue. So this is the Azure, which is like a nice bright turquoisey color. You just want to make sure it's it's mixed and the color is pretty opaque the pouring resin is rather thick I was a little bit surprised how thick it is but it is rather thick it's actually a little lumpy this color is heirloom it's kind of a it's kind of a nice beachy look this these colors I feel like if you don't use white, 
it gets a little muddy. So here's my last one. I mixed in a drop more of the resin and I'm gonna mix in my casement, which is my white. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take my cell enhancer, which I believe to be silicone, and it says on here, used to increase cell formations in acrylic color core applications. Recommend one to two drops for 30 millimeters of prepared colors. All right, I'm guessing that I'm gonna put like two drops in each of these. So I'm gonna take my cell enhancer, take my cup, and put a couple of drops. So I'm putting two drops in each. I'm gonna start with my white. So I'm gonna just take some and pour it in a couple of spots. I don't really have like a rhyme or reason with this. So now I'm gonna start with, I'm only gonna use a little bit of the, I'm just gonna use a little bit of the, um, the heirloom. I wasn't crazy about it on the first one. I'm just gonna use a little bit. I'm gonna use the Liberty Blue. And I'm gonna try to get some on the outside, maybe a little here. Okay, and maybe a little bit in the middle. This is like playing in the ultimate way, am I right? Okay, this is the Renfu Blue. And this is Azure, which also showed up a lot, so I may not put as much on, but we'll see. I'm only using some of each of these right now, and I can go, I can add more as I go. Looks like I'm making a crazy pizza, right? If you've ever done a paint pour with us before, <clears throat> we've done what's called a dirty pour. So a dirty pour is when you mix all your colors and then take a larger cup and layer them, you pour them in in layers, and then you just turn it over on your piece and lift it up. Now, now is the time if you're gonna wear gloves that you wanna put them on. I'm also gonna take my um, cell enhancer and I'm gonna add a couple of drops here and there. I didn't do this last time and I wanna see if this makes a difference. I like to do these things so that I'll make a mistake so you don't have to. That's what I like to do. So now we're just gonna start moving. Now it's really important to have something underneath because you don't wanna put this down on your paper or whatever surface you're using to protect um, your work area because it'll get, all right, we don't have enough paint, but you can start seeing the design. So it's a process. I mean, you play as you go. Paint, because once it stops moving, clearly I need more paint. Okay. So I'm gonna start adding some more paint where I need it. So I feel like I need some white down here.
So here's where another way that your little popsicle sticks come into play because I'm going to add some of the paint that fell off, which is actually very pretty. So I am just basically at this point going around and making sure that I thought maybe I could pop my bubbles. My cells don't seem to be doing anything. I'm going to run and get a blow dryer. Either this will work or it won't, but I'm going to run and get a blow dryer from my bathroom. Oh, this will work. Okay. So I'm gonna put it on low and let's see what happens. All right, I gotta move this a little bit closer. Let's see, I'll add more bubbles first. Maybe I need to use the high, uh, higher, I'll put up some more cells on. Let's see if this works. I'll tell you what guys, I don't think it's doing anything for this. Oh, actually it is. Okay. So let me turn it around a little bit more. I do think a heat gun would make a big you know, a bigger impact. Um, but like I said, I don't have one at home. All right. This is either going to work or um, somebody call the fire department. Okay. Let's see. I don't know. So, um, we're trying to get these cells to open up. and are not having much luck. Um, I don't know if it's me or the resin or what it is. I've put loads on there. I probably have put 20, 30 drops of the cell enhancer. So that is not... Um, yeah, that's not doing anything. Move it around quickly. All right. Hmm, move it around quickly. Nope. All right. It's beautiful anyway, so so here's what I think, because that's what a lot of this is. We're trying things, we're gonna see what works and see what doesn't work. So I think this is a great product. Based on the one I did earlier this week, um, it's very, it, it, it seems very, very, very durable. So for whether, whether you're doing it on a piece of artwork or a piece of furniture, you know, I don't feel like the cell, the cell enhancer really did much for us on this. I'm gonna read up some more and find out if there are any tricks to it that we missed. Um, we tried heat, we tried a blow dryer, we tried 
a lighter. Maybe I didn't do it right, but it did not work. So that's our finished product. It's got a lot going on in it. I don't want to turn it over completely because it is still moving. I think that's about it. See you soon, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming to my home.